Well, good morning. It's 6.01 on this Thursday. It looks like charges are on the way against suspended conservative Senator Mike Duffy following a long investigation by the RCMP. Duffy's lawyer issued a statement last night saying police have decided to charge his client, but he didn't specify what those criminal counts will be. Donald Bain insists his client is innocent of any criminal wrongdoing. Last fall, the Senate voted to suspend the 68-year-old over $90,000 in disputed living expenses. Mounties have been looking into the claims for the last 16 months and are expected to announce charges later today. Well, the hot, dry weather across B.C. is responsible for more than 120 wildfires burning around the province. Most of the smoke has been billowing from the coastal Kamloops and Prince George fire regions. The entire community of Hudson's Hope, west of Fort Nelson, is now on evacuation order because of the Mount McAllister fire. It's now grown to 200 square kilometers in size. Emergency responders have been going door to door requesting people leave their homes and businesses. A wildfire at Apex Mountain near Penticton has become so aggressive that crews were forced to pull back for safety reasons yesterday. It's grown to more than 100 hectares in size and has meant evacuation alerts for nearby homes. Some are situated just meters from the flames. Have a look at the situation in Kamloops. As you can see, the city is blanketed with a thick layer of smoke that's wafted all the way down from the Caribou region. Many people are reporting breathing issues. The biggest blaze of concern near Quinell has grown to cover 2,800 hectares since it was discovered last Tuesday. The weather is also behind campfire bans across most of the province. The city of Surrey has cancelled all burning permits and is prohibiting all types of outdoor fires until further notice. Charcoal barbecues are no longer allowed in parks and beaches, but propane barbecues are still permitted. The increased fire danger also means a campfire ban just in time for 25,000 music fans heading to the Pemberton Music Festival today. North Shore Rescue is asking the public for help after thieves struck the organization's equipment caches for the fourth time in recent weeks. Greg Harper joins us live from Mount Seymour this morning with more on that. Greg. Good morning, Kyla. According to North Shore Rescue, it will cost over $30,000 to replace the equipment that has been stolen in recent weeks. This is also to repair damage and to book a helicopter to, to get the equipment into the backcountry. And uh, team members say the equipment doesn't even have much street value because it's for rescue work and would be dangerous to use uh, in rock climbing. They believe the equipment may be stashed in the forest because of the remote location of the caches and the weight of all the gear. If you see gear under a tarp cached in the forest or you see someone trying to haul it out of Lynn Headwaters Park in uh, Lynn Headwaters or Grouse Mountain area, um, please let the RCMP know. Now, an anonymous donor has offered $10,000. This is to match a donation that was made by London Drugs, but volunteers say they need uh, more donations. So if you'd like to help out this volunteer organization that has saved uh, countless lives, you can do that by going to NorthShoreRescue.com. Kyle? Greg Harper live at Mount Seymour this morning. Greg, thanks for that. Well, a Port Coquitlam boy has been left without a mother with his father accused of killing her. 38-year-old Irene Gigorgita, rather, is charged with second-degree murder. RCMP say he walked into their Coquitlam detachment on Tuesday, saying his wife, Andra, was critically injured at their home. Officers later found the woman dead at the couple's townhouse in Port Coquitlam. The couple, who immigrated from Romania, have a son who's out of the country visiting relatives. Andra worked as an accountant at a local metals company. There's a new twist in the Baldev Kalzi case. The Brookside Sikh temple president did not appear in court yesterday on a charge of attempted murder. That's because he was in hospital after being attacked at the Surrey Pretrial Center. Kalzi is accused of attacking his wife on Sunday. She remains on life support in hospital. RCMP say Kalzi has some facial injuries and will recover. He is expected to appear in court today. The man charged with murder and the disappearance of a Calgary boy and his grandparents has made a brief court appearance via video. A packed public gallery watched as Douglas Garland appeared on a closed circuit television in a blue jumpsuit. Prosecutors say they're confident the evidence police have gathered so far is enough for Garland to be convicted of first and second degree murder. The bodies of Alvin and Kathy Lickness and five-year-old Nathan O'Brien still have not been found. 
For the first time in North America, a Catholic school district has approved a policy to accommodate transgender children. The Vancouver Archdiocese made the move after a human rights complaint by the family of Tracy Wilson. The 11-year-old left Sacred Heart Elementary in Delta after the school refused to treat her as a girl. Tracy now goes to a public school in Delta. The Vancouver Archdiocese says Catholic teaching does not accept that a student can change his or her gender, but the school district will support non-conforming gender expression. I was suffering from anxiety and bullying and um, just not feeling like I belonged and it and this um, this policy will sort of help the, um, other kids um, my um, with my gift feel that that thing that I've always wanted. The superintendent of the Catholic Independent Schools of Vancouver Archdiocese says the district had never encountered a case like Tracy's before and needed some time to fully research the matter before coming up with a policy. He says the policy does not contradict Catholic beliefs. Well, frankly, it looks like a bit of a dump, but that doesn't tell the whole story in a real estate market like Vancouver's. It doesn't look like a majestic mansion here, but that is how the Vancouver home is listed on MLS with a price tag of $26 million dollars. The Belmont Avenue house was built in 1937. It's boarded up and is in pretty bad shape, but it's in Point Grey with a great view and a lot size measuring 52,000 square feet.